Hello everybody, welcome to our Sunday morning worship. Today is Trinity Sunday. Uh, we thank the Lord for this day. I welcome everybody who is joining us online. I'm going to play for us an opening hymn as we give more people a chance to join in online with the service. Our opening hymn is Come Down, O Love Divine. Come down, O Love Divine. Seek now the soul of mine and visit it with thine own adore glory. Welcome everybody, welcome everybody, welcome everybody. I can see people are joining. Join in and enjoy the hymn. To dust and ashes in its heat consume it. And let thy glory Welcome everybody, welcome. <laughs> Holy charity, mine outward first chubby, and lowliness become my inner clothing. True lowliness. Welcome everybody. And so the year is strong with which the soul long shall far out past the power of human telling. For none can guess its grace. Welcome everybody, welcome, welcome. What a wonderful hymn. Welcome, welcome everybody, welcome. Let's have a moment of silence as we start our service. <laughs> In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. We say our opening prayer together. Almighty God. To whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. 
firmly resolve to keep God's commandment and to live in love and peace with all. We say the confession together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgive all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we say the Gloria together. Glory be to God on high, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for today. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come to the time of our Bible reading. Our Bible reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew. Let's hear the reading of God's Word. Matthew 28 from verses 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this another opportunity to speak to your precious sheep. I pray that as I deliver this sermon, revelation knowledge will flow freely, unhindered and uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. I pray that you will think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. None of me and all of you, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, international companies have mission. Supermarkets have mission. The military have mission. The mission of international companies is, is to fulfill to their customers what they owe to them. The mission of supermarkets is to feed the people in society and provide what we need in society. The mission of the armed forces and the military is to protect this our great nation of United Kingdom. What is the mission of the church? <laughs> the mission of the church is simply about telling people 
about the love of God in Jesus Christ and the good work that churches are doing in communities up and down the country of the UK. In homes, in the media, in schools, in the workplaces of this great nation, United Kingdom. People don't get to hear the gospel message which shape and form our culture. Millions of people in Great Britain are profoundly ignorant of what gave rise to Christmas, Good Friday, and Easter. It is the task of every Christian to lead people every part of the world to faith and to baptism and to the obedience of Christ's command. All authority has been given to me, Jesus says. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything that I have commanded you. We have been given authority. The church has been given authority. Christians have been given authority. The entire Gospel of Matthew stresses the authority of Jesus Christ. There was authority in his teaching in Matthew chapter 7, 29. Jesus exercised authority in healing in Matthew chapter 8. Jesus exercised authority in forgiving sins in Matthew chapter 9. Jesus had authority over Satan and he delegated that authority to his apostles in Matthew chapter 10. At the close of his gospel, Matthew made it clear that Jesus had all authority in earth and in heaven. In my name, you shall cast out demons. You shall lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. Brothers and sisters, this authority that Jesus had in forgiving sins, this authority that Jesus had in driving out demons, this authority that Jesus had in healing people, he has given that authority to you and I. Since we are children of God and share in his nature, we have the authority to tell the good news of the kingdom of God and his righteousness to the people around us. We have the authority to tell the good news to our friends and to the lost world. All authority has been given unto me in earth and in heaven. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of God the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And teach them to observe everything that I have commanded you. What does it mean then to go and make disciples? Well, the Greek word translated go is actually not a command. But it is a present participle. Going. So Jesus is saying here, while you are going, make disciples. As you are going about your daily business, make disciples. As you are in your workplace, make disciples. As you are living with your family, make disciples. As you are chilling out with your friends, make disciples. As you are going on a journey, on the train, on the bus, or driving, make disciples. This is the duty of every Christian, to go and make disciples. Making disciples include telling people, first of all, about what God has done for you. And secondly, telling them about the gift of God in Christ Jesus. So you testify of what the Lord has done for you. For God has been good to you. You are alive. God has shown you favor. He has shown you blessing. He has protected you. In this time of global crisis, God has kept you from all these illness and diseases. In order to make disciples, as a Christian, you are supposed to tell people of the good things that the Lord has done for you in your life. When you tell them of that good news, you are also required to tell them of the gift of God in Christ Jesus. The salvation that Christ offers. The salvation that Jesus gave on the cross. When you tell them that, you invite them to believe in Jesus Christ. 
the other day in my sermon, I was talking about how people believe in their ovens and their gas cookers. And the fact that they believe that when they put a dinner in, they expect the dinner to be ready after a few minutes. If people can believe a gas cooker and oven, then they can believe in God. You don't need proof to believe in God. The very fact that you are alive is a proof enough for you to believe that God exists. And that you need to come to him because he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Making disciples means that you are telling people of the good work that God has done for you. Of the good things that God has done for you. Of the protection, of the provision, of the blessing and the greater grace that God has shown you. You tell that to the people that you know. Invite people to church. Many people worry and think too much that when they invite people to church, they might say no. But it may surprise you to know that when you invite people to church, they will come. I invite people to church all the time. And whenever I see people, I encourage them to faith in Christ Jesus. It is not just the vicar that is supposed to make disciples. You as a Christian is supposed to make disciples. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, you are supposed to tell the story of God. You are supposed to tell the narrative of Jesus Christ and the gift of salvation that he provides and draw more people to God and make disciples for God and make disciples of all nations for God. Tell your families about God. If anybody is in your family who don't believe in God, I want to encourage you, tell them about the love of God in Jesus Christ. Tell them about the gift of God in Jesus Christ. Tell them about the grace of God in Jesus Christ. Tell them that God died on the cross for their sins. And give them the opportunity to come to believe in Jesus Christ. And all will be well with them. All authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe everything that I've commanded you. When you have finished making disciples, when you have invited people to church, when you have drawn more people to the community of faith in Christ, then the next step is baptizing them and teaching them. It is the duty of every bishop. It is the duty of every archdeacon. It is the duty of every vicar of our team rector. It is the duty of every lay preacher. It is the duty of every pastor and minister to study the word of God, to present themselves before God. When we study the word of God, when we spend time with God, when we come before God in prayer and in study of the word of God, then we are able to accurately divide the word of truth. We are able to accurately teach the word of God. We are able to accurately teach new candidates of baptism as they make their journey in faith, as they become part of God's family. When we study the word of God, when we go in the presence of God, when we spend time with the biblical literature as ministers of the gospel, then we are able to accurately divide the word of truth. It is my duty then, after you have made disciples and they have come to church, after they have joined the community of faith, it is my duty as your church leader to accurately teach the word of God and to divide the word of truth to their understanding and to allow the Holy Spirit to work in them and bring real revelation in their lives. That is what it means to baptize and teach. So when it comes to baptism and and teaching, yes, as a Christian, you have a part in that. But it is the duty of every minister of the gospel to baptize new believers, to teach them the word of God. In order to do that, we are supposed to spend time with the word of God. We are supposed to seek God in his word. We are supposed to learn the scriptures. We are supposed to let the scriptures become part of our life. When that happens, we are able to teach it from our heart. We are able to teach it from the core of our being for people to understand and clearly identify with the word of God. All authority has been given unto me. 
Go therefore and make disciples of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you for ourselves. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our friends. We thank you that we are still alive and in good health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Her Majesty the Queen. We pray for the royal family. We thank you for our Prime Minister and we pray for the leaders of the nations. We pray that you will grant Boris Johnson wisdom. We pray that the leaders of the nations will work for the common good of the people that they serve. Heavenly Father, we pray in our own country here for our Prime Minister Boris Johnson. We pray for your blessing upon him. We pray that you will grant him favor. We pray that you will grant him wisdom and knowledge as he leads this nation in this time of global crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are sick and in hospital. We pray for those who are in care homes. We pray that you will send your blanket of healing upon all those who are sick. And so we pray now for those doctors and surgeons. We pray for consultants. We pray for care workers. We pray for GP surgeries. We pray that you will grant them grace and favor. We pray that you will give them wisdom as they administer medicine to those who are sick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church. We pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury and York. We pray for our bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray that your spirit will be upon us. We pray that you will bring revival to your church in England. Father, I pray that your spirit will move among your church. I pray that you will revive your ministers of the gospel to continue to proclaim the gospel of the, of the kingdom of God and to draw more people closer to your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray and thank you for all those who have died in the faith of Christ. We pray and remember this day everybody who is in bereavement. We pray for those who mourn the loss of their loved ones. We pray that you will give them grace. We pray that you will give them hope. We pray that you will strengthen them. And we pray that you will give troubled hearts the joy of your salvation. Heavenly Father, we pray that as people prepare to say goodbye to their loved ones, that you will be with them and Father comfort all troubled hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, I bring before you the needs of my parish, everybody in Eastwood. Father Lord, I am the spiritual leader of the area of Eastwood. I pray that you protect that area. As I pray that you protect South End, protect the county of Essex, I pray that you protect the realm of United Kingdom. Every demonic spirit that will try to attempt anything funny, I command that you crush it in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you will protect every one of them. I pray that you will pour out your spirit afresh on every one of them. I stand in the gap of every member of my church. As I pray for every parishioner in the area of Eastwood, I stand as their spiritual leader. Father, I pray and decree and declare that you will protect every soul in Eastwood. I pray that you will protect them with your spiritual protection. I pray that no harm will come before them. I pray that the blessing that maketh rich and add no sorrow will be their portion. Father, I pray that you rain your blessing upon the area of Eastwood and the area of South End. May they know your grace and favor and abundance love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we come to the time of peace. Jesus Christ is our peace. 
He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace by waving to the screen. <laughs> peace of the Lord be always with you. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this is the time where normally we will have our collection taken. I have announced on Tuesday that our new website is now live and on the website if you open the website on the computer or a tablet you can click on the donation button and do your donation and give your donation to the church finances so what you will normally give in the loose collection please go online I will leave the link below this video click on the link which will take you to our web page when you get on the web page, you will see a donation button on there. Click on that donation and you can make your donation and make your collection to the church finances. May the Lord bless you as you do that. A moment of silence as we come before the Lord's table. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arm for us upon the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by raising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and the blood of your dear son, Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup of wine and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
by whom and in whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. We say together the prayer before communion. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean. Our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your dear Son that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say your word and I shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to play for us a hymn as I take Holy Communion on behalf of everybody who is watching.
Let us say the prayer after communion together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still afar off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope that you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we come to the end of our Sunday morning worship. I trust that you have enjoyed the service. I trust that God has met you in this service. I trust that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And I trust that you have been renewed by this service. The blessing. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm going to play for us our final hymn. <laughs> and sisters this is the end of our service i will see you on tuesday shalom peace <laughs>